Well, hello and welcome to One Man's Faith today. As you can see, my name is Neil Owen. Glad to be with you and I'm glad you're with me. Even though I can't see you, but I have to, I'm pretending. I see a, I see a gazillion faces out there. And so I thank you. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm being facetious. Okay, uh, last week we started uh, on, a, on a new series. Uh, we're we're kind of following uh, the Old Testament readings, but right now we're in the book of Job. And so that in and of itself is, a, is quite a feat, just trying to get through that book. It, it's, it's, it can be confusing. And, you know, it might have been set up that way on purpose. We don't know. But let's go ahead and, uh, let's go ahead and start. Uh, I'm going to reread Job 1, 1 through 5, just to give us a, a place to jump off of, Okay. There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job, and that man was blameless, upright, fearing God, and turning away from evil. Seven sons and three daughters were born to him. His possessions also were 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, 500 female donkeys, and very many servants. And that man was the greatest of all the men of the east." His sons used to go and hold a feast in the house of each one on his day, i.e. his birthday, and they would send and invite their three sisters to eat and drink with them. And when the days of feasting were completed their cycle, Job would send and consecrate them, rising up early in the morning and offering burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, perhaps my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts." Thus Job did continually. So Job is a man, a fairly wealthy man, with that many, uh, with that many animals, 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, and 500 female donkeys, plus very many servants. And he had seven sons, three daughters, and they... It, it appears from this that they like to party especially on their birthday. And so they held parties, uh, to, you know, to celebrate their birthday, just like you do, or at least probably some of you do. And uh, Job kind of became an intermediary uh, between them and God. He, and he would continually offer sacrifices for his children in case one of them may sin. Okay, well, these kind of things kind of get him in trouble. We, we talked about that a little bit. What we don't know about Job is exactly when uh, he, he was in, you know, he was on the earth. Uh, it says that he was in the land of Uz. And we talked about that. There are two Uzes. One is down in the southern part on the Sinai Peninsula. Uh, Edom is down there. Uh, and uh, the first, his first uh, kind of friend, if I can use that term loosely, was from Taman, which is in the in the area of of Edom. Okay. Uh, the other uh, place he could have come from is over toward Mesopotamia. Uh, because Uz is used twice. It's used in Genesis uh, 10, where it talks about uh, Shem became the father, father of Eber, and the older brother Japheth, sons were born. The sons of Shem were Elam and Ashur, and Archpikashad, and Lod and Aram, and the sons of Aram were Uz and Hull, Gether, and mash, okay? So that's one place. Shem, uh, Shem was the son of Noah, one of the three. He settled in, t in the Middle Eastern area, Sinai Peninsula, all down through there. Uh, Japheth, it's believed, uh, moved and went over into Ethiopia and started to populate the um, the. African continent. Ham went went north, so uh, 
it's very possible that this is where that, uh, that it was down near and around Edom. Now, the other place is in Genesis 22, and we talked about that. Uh, it says, uh, it was told to Abraham in verse 20 of Genesis 22, Behold, Milcah, who has, who has borne children to your brother Nahor, us his firstborn, us his firstborn, and Buzz his brother, and Kemuel the father of Aram. So here's the second us, and interestingly, he has a brother named Buzz, and one of the uh, one of one of uh, uh, Job's friends, I believe it was Zohor. I'll, I'll have to I'll have to look. Uh, there was Eliphaz, uh, Bildad, and Zohor. I believe Zohor was a Buzzite. In other words, he was from the land of Buzz. So knowing that Job was from the family of Uz, it's, you know, we, it's tit for tat here as to which one it is. I... I think I would more go towards it being in the Mesopotamian area because of all the sheep and camels and all he had. You're going to need more grassland then than you're going to find on the Sinai Peninsula. Matter of fact, I think you'd have to have the whole Sinai Peninsula to be able to carry for that many uh, animals. But we don't know. We don't know. So we, we have the story of Job and the book of Job is interesting because it starts in, in, in prose, which is a, a narrative form. It talks about who he is, these things happening, and, you know, uh, God having court and all, all, the, all the family or all the angels or whatever go, you know, you know, go into the presence of God, and the Satan goes with them. And, but then... Uh, after the narrative there about uh, Job, it jumps to poetry, starting with chapter three, and all the all these narratives and and uh, uh, this dialogue between Job and his three friends are all in a poetic form. They're not in the prose form as you can see at the beginning, and. Job ends, I think, in chapter 42 in prose. So you have prose, poetry, and prose. This is how the book is set up. Why does that matter? The way the language is used is basically the matter. Uh, you can get by with a lot more, and because of the way they talked and some of the, the ideas and expressions they made, poetry lent itself more to be able to uh, present that, uh, and we'll and we'll see that we'll we'll see that here in just a little bit. We also then kind of finished up with a look at the Satan as being the adversary, and it talks about them coming into the courts of God. Uh, let me see. Let me let me uh, uh, verse six of chapter one. Uh, now, there was a day when the sons of God, those are actually the angels, came to present themselves before the Lord, and the Satan came along with them. And the Lord said to the Satan, where did you come from? And he said, I've been traveling around on the earth. So we, so we looked at the fact that, that Satan was, uh, I'm going to say, kind of bound to the earth. Okay, That's where he, uh, that's where he lived. Uh, and we can see that from uh, Revelations, and we're going to look at this in just a little while too, as we uh, as we get into some of the things that uh, that uh, Job and his friends discussed. Uh, that he was limited to the earth, but he had the opportunity to go into the courtroom, and we talked about the courtroom. God sits in a court. It's not like a courtyard. It's a courtroom, i.e., a justice court. God sits on a throne. The throne of any kingdom is in the courtroom. This is where people come and present their case, or the king presents his case against 
people. And we talked about the fact that the reason Satan is called an adversary is because that's what he does. He is an advocate and he goes before the Lord and he presents accusations against you and me. And based on whether those accusations can and are uh, either substantiated or, or the, the defense rises above that, will determine how much access Satan has to you. We see that from this, that uh, uh, most of our Bibles say that God says, have you considered my servant Job? Like he's saying, hey, I've got this really neat guy down here. Have you thought about him? Like he was maybe taunting him, but pro probably uh, the... better way to look at this is from the standpoint of this is a Young's little translation translate it, translate it this way have you set your heart against my servant Job because there is none like him in the land you see the difference God knew what was on Satan's heart and God said are you, setting your, are you setting your heart against my servant? Because that's what he does to us. He goes before the Lord and he says, hey, Neil has done this. I therefore have right to his life. And in a lot of cases when things happen in our lives, they are from the standpoint of the adversary going before the court and there being nobody there at that time to, to, to handle our side of the case. Okay? I got to take a break. So we'll take a break. We'll come back and talk about that and then we'll jump further. Okay? So get a cup of coffee. I'll be right back. <laughs> 